What is going on, everybody? It is your boy Bad Dog in desperate need of a shave and back with another New York Giants video. The coaching search continues for the New York Giants today. They begin some interviews today. They'll have some tomorrow, and they'll have a couple over the weekend. I just kind of want to get your thoughts on who you believe would be the best candidate for the job. Who's the guy that's going to bring the Giants back to prominence? Who's the most competent head coach out there that could turn this team around and get this franchise back to glory like it used to be so we're not winning 12 games over our next three years? Just let me know in the comment section who you guys would like. I'll kind of give you my idea on these guys coming forward. Today I interview Chris Richard. Don't know much about Chris Richard, to be honest with you. I think he's got uh, he's the most inexperienced out of all these guys, it seems, that they're going to interview and he'd really have to overwhelm the Giants' ownership. Uh, I don't believe that he's going to get the job. It would be an absolute shock if they hired Chris Richard as the next head coach of the New York Giants. I just don't think he's got the experience to lead a team yet. Uh, maybe in a couple of years he will, but I just I don't think he's that guy. I don't think he's the guy of the New York Giants. It's just that simple. I just don't think he's got the experience to do so. Mike McCarthy is a name that has been brought up a lot uh, by the media and by Giants fans. He's one of the favorites to land this job that he interviews on Friday. I'll be honest with you, if we hired Mike McCarthy, I'm not going to be too upset. But at the same time, I don't know how good Mike McCarthy really is as a head coach. And you have an Aaron Rodgers as your quarterback. Pretty easy to be a good head coach. I mean, look what the Packers are doing this year. There's no Mike McCarthy there, and Packers haven't fallen off one bit. As a matter of fact, they're even better than they've been recently. So... Um, you know, Mike McCarthy obviously has that head coaching experience. He has worked with Aaron Rodgers. He could definitely be instrumental in the development of Daniel Jones. This is something that I know the New York Giants ownership is going to look at when it comes to a head coach is developing the young quarterback without a doubt. They're going to want to do its best for Daniel Jones. They're going to want to bring the guy in here who they think can probably uh, give him the best development and be the best for his future. But at the same time, you can't overlook the rest of the team. Mike McCarthy has that experience. We all know that. He's played in big games there in Green Bay. He's won a lot of games as a head coach. He definitely has the experience to do so. And there's no doubt that this guy is going to be one of the favorites uh, for the New York Giants. It's probably his job to lose, honestly, unless Matt Rule interviews, which we don't know yet. And I'll get to him in a little bit. But Mike McCarthy going into these interviews... Uh, you know, today, tomorrow, and Saturday, I got to imagine he's the favorite out of the four that they're going to interview. So it wouldn't surprise me uh, at the end of all this if Mike McCarthy does end up being the New York Giants head coach. Again, he wouldn't be my first choice, but, you know, I can definitely understand them going in that direction. You got Don Martindale, Don Wink uh, Martindale, or for those who don't know, Wink Martindale used to be the uh, game show host for Tic Tac Doe, amongst other things, but I remember that growing up as a kid. <laughs> Wink Martindale was a Tic Tac Doe uh, game show host. So that's where they get the little nickname Wink. So in case you didn't know who that was, because a lot of younger people that watch this probably never knew who the hell Wink Martindale was, but that's why his nickname is that. Anyway, I digress. The Baltimore Ravens defensive uh, coach, obviously defensive coordinator over there, done a fantastic job of Baltimore. You look at that defense, man. It's one of the best defenses in the league. It always is. Um, this is something that the New York Giants could desperately use as a defense. My God, we haven't had a defense here in years. 2016, we had a good defense. It's the whole reason we went to the playoffs. We were 11-5. The offense didn't do a damn thing that year, and the defense was amazing, so they ended up going to uh, the playoffs that year, and then it's fallen off the last three years. We had one of the worst defenses in the league, if not the worst defense in the league over the last three years. Gave over 450 points this year. Secondary is a mess. Got no coverage on the uh, tight ends. Can't get to the quarterback. Defensive scheme is terrible. There's a lot of things that need help with this defense. There's a lot of young players here. Some players got uh, quite a bit of talent. It just has to be developed. Don Martindale could be the guy that could develop that. We all know that the New York Giants have always been predicated on defense and running the ball. I think we got to get back to that. Don Martindale certainly not a bad candidate there. I would love to see us turn this defense around. I know this is a passing league. I understand that. But in my opinion, defense still wins in the league. It's all about running and stopping the run. It's all about getting off the field on third down and owning time of possession. The Giants haven't been able to do any of that over the last three years. I think Don Martindale could come in here and immediately change the philosophy of this defense, the attitude of this defense, get ahead in the right track. He's not a bad candidate either, in my opinion. So if we went that way, that would not bother me one bit either. Eric Bieniemy is another hot coaching name that's come uh, up here recently. He'll also interview on Saturday with the New York Giants. Andy Reid's offensive a coordinator. And again, I don't know how much I like uh, Eric Bieniemy as a head coach. I mean, Kansas City's got some of the best offensive talent in the league. They probably have the most talented quarterback in the NFL. 
And I talk about it all the time, man. Like I said about Mike McCarthy, I don't know how hard it is to be a coordinator when Pat Mahomes is your quarterback. Uh, maybe Eric Bieniemy could come in here and make Daniel Jones even better. But Daniel Jones is not the talent level of Pat Mahomes. We're being honest, man. It's not close. Pat Mahomes is an incredibly talented quarterback, and Daniel Jones isn't at that level. So what you do over Pat Mahomes, you cannot do for Daniel Jones. Can Eric Bieniemy build a game plan around Daniel Jones' strengths? And that's a big question. I don't know if he can do that. I don't know. What, uh, he doesn't have a lot of coaching experience either. So I don't know if Eric Bieniemy is the guy for here. We've had offensive coordinators, the last two head coaches. Sherman was an offensive coordinator. He was terrible. McAdoo was an offensive coordinator. He was terrible. Do you really want to go down that same road again with Eric Bieniemy, bring in another offensive coordinator and have another debacle of a couple of seasons and then get rid of Eric Bieniemy a couple of years later? I can only see that happening with Eric Bieniemy. He's not my first choice, that's for sure. Um, I don't really want him here as head coach, but that's just my opinion on that. So, you know, we'll see what happens. Now, Josh McDaniels is a guy that is in play. The Patriots have for, granted permission for uh, not only the Giants, but I believe the Panthers to interview Josh McDaniels. One thing I'll say about McDaniels is this. He's very good with the Patriots. And again, there you go, offense coordinator. I, I mean, you know, um, Tom Brady. You know, Josh McDaniels has had head coaching experience. He doesn't have a great track record. And it's funny, the coaching tree under Bill Parcells, a lot of these guys have succeeded in the NFL, but the coaching tree under Bill Belichick, most of them have not. And that includes Josh McDaniels. I don't know if Josh McDaniels is a guy to be the head coach of the New York Giants. Again, he's got that uh, you know Belichick pedigree, but he hasn't succeeded as a head coach. And I don't know if he's the guy to turn this team around. I honestly don't. It'll be interesting to see. Um, you know, he's got those Belichick ties. Belichick, obviously, very close to the New York Giants, so that's a possibility that they do go in that direction. There's no interview set for Josh McDaniels, but they uh, that's a guy that they have been granted permission to talk to, so we'll see if anything surfaces with Josh McDaniels. And then, of course, there's Matt Rule. Uh, they lost the bowl game last night, 26-14. to 14. Um, Don't know how good that looked on Matt Rule. The Georgia had 14 players sitting out of there. They still got blown out in the game. Um, I'm not putting that on Matt Rule. Georgia's a much better team than Baylor. The, the SEC is a much, much, much better conference than the Big 12. It's not close. We see this every year. The Big 12 had one team win a bowl game. That was Texas. It was probably the worst Big 12 team in the bowl outside of K-State. Uh, but, you know, the Big 12 is just not comparison to the SEC. Even with Georgia sitting all those guys, George Pickens didn't sit. George Pickens is one of the best young receivers in the country. DeAndre Swift also played last night. Jake Fromm played too. So it's not like Georgia sat their best players. But Andrew Thomas didn't play last night. The defense didn't play last night. Baylor's offense is a great anyway. It's tough. I mean, Charlie Brewer is not a very good quarterback. They do have a couple of decent running backs. Uh, and Mims is a good wide receiver. But you saw Oklahoma shut down Baylor as well. Oklahoma's defense is trash. I mean, you look at what LSU did to Oklahoma. Baylor couldn't do anything. So then again, that's kind of Matt Rule's signature there going out, uh, getting blown out by a Georgia team that didn't play pretty much half their starters. <laughs> so I don't know how good that looks on him. I th he's still the Giants' favorite, I think. McCarthy and Rule are favorites to land this job. I, I still think those are the head coach candidates. And again, um, I'm not going to get too hard. I'm not going to be too hard on uh, Matt Rule for losing to Georgia, who's just a much better team than Baylor is. To be honest with you, if you look at it on paper, even with those guys sitting out, Georgia's a lot better. So. Um, it's really a guy, and to be honest, with you, Georgia would have kicked the hell out of Oklahoma if they played too. I mean, it's just Oklahoma's the best team in the Big Twelve, and they they are no match. That Oklahoma would have been no match for LSU. Obviously, we saw Georgia would have kicked their ass. Auburn would have beat them. Florida would have beat them. Alabama would have beat them. You could take the top six teams in the SEC. They all would have beat Oklahoma, in my opinion. SEC is just a superior conference to the Big Twelve. So Matt Rule was going up against a stacked deck anyway. But those are the six candidates. You got Rashard McCarthy. Martindale, Bienemy, Josh McDaniels, Matt Rule. If you guys got a favorite, leave it in the comments section. Thank you for watching. It's Bad Diggity Dizzle, and I am gone. Peace!